SpaceX tests and develops two engine lineups at its McGregor facilities, with one powering the company's workhorse Falcon rockets and the other intended to take its Starship Next Generation rocket to the skies. The engines powering Starship are dubbed Raptor, and SpaceX is currently testing their second generation design in McGregor, Texas, as it continues to manufacture the engines and build its stocks ahead of a highly awaited Starship orbital test flight expected later this year. The Raptor is a larger engine when compared to the Merlins that are responsible for powering the Falcon rocket and it features a different design and fuel over its predecessor. The Raptor has greater efficiency via reusing some of the gases that are consumed to power up the engine, all while keeping in mind the constraints of propellant production on the Martian surface, which is the engine and its rocket's final intended destination. SpaceX builds and tests the engines in its facilities in McGregor, Texas, after which they are shipped to either Boca Chica in the same state or to Florida in the case of the Merlins. Most of the engine testing is also done in Texas, but SpaceX also tests them later on after they have been integrated with their rockets. Tests for the Raptor 2, which is the latest generation of the Raptor engines, kicked off in December, and since then SpaceX has been rapidly firing the engines. Each Raptor 2 is aiming at generating more thrust at a higher pressure than the first generation engine. With the Raptor 2, SpaceX is aiming to achieve at least 230 to 250 tons of thrust to mark a significant increase over the first generation engine. In rocketry, chamber pressure refers to the pressure at which both the fuel and oxidizer are mixed in the engine's combustion chamber. This is the components that ignites the pair, with the resulting byproducts generating thrust to enable a rocket to lift off from a planet's surface. The performance upgrades naturally place higher stress on the engine's components, and in line with its policy of failing fast to learn more, SpaceX is testing them as quickly as they can. The latest of these tests took place last week when SpaceX fired up an engine at the test site's tripod stand, where several years ago Falcon 9 boosters would be test fired. Now, the tripod stand hosts tests for the new Raptor engines. Frankly, this epic footage really gave me goosebumps. Huge thanks to Justin Swartz, photographer for WAI Media in McGregor, Texas, for capturing these great moments. Interestingly enough, the burn lasted for over 50 seconds, much longer than the recent static fire tests on Starbase's orbital launch mount. Super Heavy B-7 breathed fire both last Tuesday and Thursday in static fire tests, briefly lighting up their Raptor engines while remaining anchored to the ground but the longest record they have achieved so far is only 20 seconds. According to a tweet posted by Musk, the long-duration burn is aimed to test autogenous pressurization. So, presumably SpaceX will be conducting the longer tests at Starbase in the future to keep up with the progress at McGregor. These tests are vital for an orbital test flight to occur this year. Besides that, the company will fire up more and more of the vehicle's engines simultaneously as the test campaign proceeds. The question is, will SpaceX increase the number of engines static firing or go full on in a 33 engine static fire? Logically, it would make sense for SpaceX to conduct multiple static fires with a gradual increase of engines. However, this is SpaceX we're talking about and one comment from Musk could change everything. Based on the latest update from Musk, the Super Heavy Booster was rolled back to the production site and into the Mega Bay, and its sensor engines are being installed. Thus, it's possible that a static fire test with all 33 engines will take place in the near future, ideally within this week. In addition to preparing for Starship's first orbital flight, SpaceX is also accelerating the pace of firing Raptor 2 engines at McGregor towards the upgrades being done to Raptor 2 for upcoming boosters and ships. Booster 9 and Ship 26 most likely will be the first pair of vehicles to debut this upgraded Raptor 2 engine. These will be slightly easier to manufacture, have slightly higher thrust, and will also include an electric thrust vector control, or TVC, system that replaces the old hydraulic TVC system on Raptor, as Elon Musk said recently. This will allow much more simplified control of the engine during flight and also simplified hardware and weight reductions on the vehicles, especially on the boosters where 13 of these engines will need to move. 
with more and more breakthroughs in improvement, SpaceX's Starship will unlock access to the solar system and beyond. Starship, by design, can be refueled by other Starship vehicles in Earth orbit. This means it could hypothetically carry a huge amount of mass around the solar system. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk said in a public meeting of the National Academies in November of 2021 that that is a five times greater performance than the very best the SLS can offer, even in its final configuration with a kick stage. Starship is also forecasted to be significantly cheaper, although whether it can hit Musk's optimistic projection of less than $10 million per launch remains to be seen. According to Robin Haig, former head of launch at the UK launch company Skyrora, if they get anywhere near that cost, it's kind of an analog to a 747 and a shipping container all in one. That's going to be used throughout the solar system. With a thousand cubic meters of usable volume, Starship is also big enough to fit the entire Eiffel Tower. Disassembled, of course, though not powerful enough to lift it into orbit. This gargantuan capability led by Heldman and her colleagues to publish a paper on what sort of equipment Starship could carry to the lunar and Martian surface. Refilling Starship in orbit effectively resets the rocket equation, allowing for large payloads to be transported to the Moon and Mars, they wrote, a reference to the fact that the more mass you want to launch, traditionally, the more thrust you need on an exponential scale. Starship is not limited to these destinations, though. It's not fine-tuned to either the Moon or Mars, says Margarita Maranova, a former senior Mars development engineer at SpaceX. The goal for Starship is to create this more generic, larger-scale exploration capability. Ideas include launching full-size drills rather than pint-sized versions. You can put a 100-foot or 30-meter drill on the vehicle and then just deploy it, Heldman says. You don't have to try and fold it up. That's exciting because you can drill down into ice on Mars, which is very important for sustaining human exploration and also the search for life. Starship could conceivably also offer a two-way delivery service, returning vast quantities of material to Earth from these and other worlds. With the first orbital test launch of Starship on the horizon, scientists are dreaming about what it might make possible, from trips to Neptune to planetary defense. Or as Musk puts it, it's really whatever you can imagine. And with that, our time is up. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what we're doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.